All right, folks, I want to talk about this laptop uh, solution that I, I just can't get out of my head. Last night I was playing on this prototype laptop that I can't talk about yet, but I should be able to get a review on by August, sometime maybe perhaps the end of August. And I've been using this since June. And it's not the Apex 15, you know, thick model. This is a Ryzen 4800H APU only. And, and I've been using this for a good month now. It's a great laptop, but last night I decided to play a little bit of Overwatch, and I could play this at 100% resolution scaling, so full HD, 1080p, and set the settings all on low, and pretty much maintain 60 plus FPS online. Unplugged from the power supply for an hour and a half to almost two hours. On the APU, unplugged, over 60 FPS, online. So it's pinging the Wi-Fi. Brightness is all the way up. I can't remember what the nits are in this panel. I think it's around 325 to 350. It's a gorgeous display. 100% standard RGB. Wow, that was a really nice experience. And the fans were just barely whirring away, nice and quiet. And the temperatures, I think they were right around 59 to 61 degrees Celsius. What a neat piece of technology to be able to do that. And I started thinking, well, at this point, I've got a pretty good experience under my belt with the Ryzen CPUs. I've got a lot of experience under my belt with Intel. And I think I've pretty much used almost every single GPU from uh, you know the 1650 on up, including this 150 watt 2080 Super. I'm lucky me, this is really great. And what I've noticed is that Ryzen CPUs start to get really hot once you pair them with higher wattage GPUs as there's a shared heat pipe solution. So if we transfer heat and increase that heat voltage wattage on one part, it's going to ultimately affect the other. And I've been able to kind of showcase that, especially with the Matrix laptop. And that had a 110 watt 2060 and the cooling solution on there was really nice good airflow, good fans, that's a very nice laptop. But once you apply an Electro Boost at 110 watts, that 4800H had no problem getting into the 90s. Fortunately, we were able to peel that back off down to 90 watts on the 2060 by not running Electro Boost, max out the fans, we had great thermal performance. But there seems to be a tipping point when it comes to Ryzen and how much GP wattage it can handle with a shared heatsink before it starts to get really hot. And they seem to be very, very sensitive to this, even more so than Intel. While this is a bigger laptop here, the six core CPU in here will run at 55 watts um, along with 150 watt GPU combined. And yeah, the CPU can hit 90 degrees, maybe a little bit more, but man, if Ryzen was pulling 55 watts up against, let's say 150 watt GPU, I am more than positive it would hit 105 degrees Celsius. Now I'm not bashing Ryzen, we just have two different technologies here. And I, I have a very strong hunch here, and I think we're all about to find out over the next 12 months that the Ryzen mobile CPUs may not perform too thermally efficient once we start to acquire the higher wattage GPUs and combine with this beautiful CPU. And then I, I've got to say this, I've been talking about this on the forums since probably May or June. I think the best GPU to pair this with to make like the ultimate laptop, at least for me, for 2020, and this can never happen by the way, but it's just so fun to talk about this. The 16 inch MacBook Pro that has the Radeon 5600M, that's a different 5600M that we get out of laptops. This one is special, it has 40 compute units, and instead of using six gigabytes of GDDR6 video memory, it has eight gigabytes of HBM2. And this whole entire special specialty 5600M that Apple gets to use, that AMD made them, has a TDP of 50 watts. And in some circumstances, it should be a little bit more powerful than an RTX 2060. Think of maybe like a 90 watt variant. Think about that. 
give us a 4800H that by itself will pull around 65 watts under heavy load compared to Intel's 90 watts if everything's uncorked. And then combine that with the GPU power, Ryzen's not gonna need to be fed that much, right? Unless it's editing, rendering, video, and coding. So maybe it's cooled down to around 25, 35 watts while gaming, while getting the HBM2 equipped 5600M capped out at 50 watts. Oh, how great of a laptop would that be? Then we can probably get by, it would be close, but possibly a 100 watt USB-C charging solution. Maybe we can acquire what Dell uses for their 130 watt USB-C charging solution that's in the XPS 15 and 17. And if you've been following that, there may be a little bit of shenanigans there and some issues, but at least Dell was able to to make that and let's see if they can make it happen with a few more updates if you don't know what i'm talking about there seems to be a, a charging or, or holding charge issue when some of those laptops are under load and it's under investigation i may try to get my hands on one so i can identify what it is for myself but i've been reading up on it and there seems to be perhaps a potential 130 watt usb-c charging issue when it comes to that laptop regardless to be able to have that 50 watt HBM2 high performance specialty 5600M that Apple gets, and don't be mad at Apple, Apple is smart. Good on them for working with AMD to get this awesome graphics card inside of a laptop. But man, that GPU is just, it's just meant for laptops. You get some stout power that's around RTX 2060 level at nearly half the TDP. Combine that with Ryzen maybe 100 watt USB-C charging capability, maybe 130 watts. And now, here's what you could get out of a situation like this. You could get a laptop that runs at maybe 70 degrees Celsius with the CPU and GPU, and you'd be able to keep the decibels at around maybe 40 to 44 dB, right? I mean, with my experience, I feel like what I'm telling you here is probably pretty close to accurate, especially if you have a company like Electronics that's willing to, you know, make a system that's stout. Now, there's nothing they can do about trying to acquire this special 5600M. And while it may be impossible for this to ever happen, there's something very, very interesting that I want to add here. And that is that Apple is eventually going to be ditching everything and moving over to ARM so they're going to use their own solutions. So what they have inside of their iPad and iPhones is their own custom chips. I believe they've been doing this maybe since 2012. Don't quote me on that or maybe do. And with the ARM solutions that Apple intends on using, therefore ditching, you know, Intel and AMD, what's this beautiful GPU going to be doing, right? What do you think, AMD? Is this a timed exclusive thing that you have or is this just purely exclusive to Apple? Can we get our hands on this sooner, better than later? I know it's wishful thinking, but that is the graphics card that I think would be more than ideal, not only to be paired with your Ryzen 4000 series, but as a perfect combination to be put inside of a laptop to offer a wide range of versatility for a huge amount of people. Yeah. All right, folks, that's going to do it. Hopefully you enjoyed this little video. Very, very passionate, but I've been thinking about this for a long time. I just wanted to get it out there. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. I'm Bob Voltrades, and I'll see you in the next video.